My name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today, we're going to talk a little bit more about tools, because y'all know, know, y'all know, I love me some tools. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about hook tweezers, and we're going to talk about straight tweezers. Let's do this. So you might be asking yourself, Justin, you know, I've been micro soldering for a little while right now, and uh, I do not have and or genuinely see a lot of hook tweezers on the market. Where are you finding these things? Who's using them? What's the deal? Tell me. Tell me what the deal is. Well, hook tweezers are actually kind of one of those things that we do behind the scenes because we know better. You know what I'm saying? It's it, for me, I call them the little toucan Sams. You know what I'm saying? I've been I've been seeing them for a long time. Um, I, I didn't really hear many people talking about them, so I, you know, I tried to try to get everybody on that train. You know, with the gravity, the drop method. You know, where we grab and hook things and let them drop. You know what I'm saying? So I've been talking about it throughout the videos, but you might notice that nobody sells this stuff, huh? Well, here's the deal. So number one. I've actually tried to get these manufactured before. It's actually quite a quality control nightmare to get this kind of done at this point just because you can lose an entire pair of tweezers making these and it's it, people racing around out there. I don't know if y'all heard that. Um, but anyway, it's actually it, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get these things made because if you mess up during the process, you basically lose a whole tweezer and the, the cost goes up, right? Um, and I just really wasn't wanted to make that kind of investment right now. So anyway, um, let us go in here and let me show you the differences and let me show you why the hook tweezers in a lot of situations are superior and let me just save everybody some money and let y'all take the risk to break your own tweezers. <laughs> y'all see what I'm doing here? Y'all break your own tweezers. No upcharge. I'm not going to charge you for the hook. You just got to make it yourself. So here's the deal. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take a, a little board here and we have got some really super duper nice, what are these? we got the SM02s. You can definitely find these on my website. They are some of the nicest, straightest tweezers. They make the INEZs look like junk. You know what I'm saying? This is the difference between high quality and low quality ones. Let's look. So the deal is, no matter how high quality this thing is, if we come down here and we can see, we can see these are nice. Look at how straight those are. Ooh, they fit between everything. I mean, you can get down and get in here on this little baby stuff. And, you know, it's appropriate. You know, when you've got to use some nice straights and you don't have a lot of room, like this guy is a perfect little example, you can get down here, you can grab them, and you see how you got that little, little grab there? You can pick up whatever you want, right? And, you know, as that scales up, so do the forces involved with actually tweezing something. So let's move up. Let's grab this guy, all right? So if we lift up the board and we do the gravity method, you see the board's kind of, if the board itself is not perfectly balanced, it's always going to go one side to the other, right? So let's go even bigger. Let's do an IC here. So you can pick it up. And again, we're going one toward one direction. And you can see right here, we're starting to create a little bit of damage in the top coat, right? Then if we move over to like a glass IC, I mean, Y'all know glass is slick. Metal on glass is just going to slide like roller skates, you know what I mean? So try that, and you can actually see here that it's already been nicked. So we come down here and try and pick it up. I mean, it just basically just slides right off. The force necessary to do it is just its going it's probably going to damage something. So you start to see the, the what's it called, the, the limitations of the straight tweezers. They're great for a lot of things, but hook tweezers... I'm just saying they do things too. They do things too. So let us now take a look at a pair of hook tweezers, ones that I've been using a little bit here and there, you know what I mean? And let's see the difference. So first off, let's put these right up next to each other. Let's, let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, they look a little bit different. One looks all gnarly and like crazy looking like it's been doing, that looks like, like a lobster claw or something, you know what I mean? And then we got our knives, our straight ones. But you can see the difference. Super slick. Shh grab friction, right? So, let's do what we were just doing. And let's grab this guy. So, no matter what, the board is still going to kind of go in the direction that it wants to go based on its, like, kind of balance and everything. But, I mean, you see how much better it holds on? Like, I can kind of 
bounce it a little bit, you know what I mean? Let's go over here straight to the IC. Let's go right into that spot. We're gonna go straight up here, and we're just gonna lift it up. Put some shakes on it, push it up and down, try and drop it. It's not going anywhere. Set it down. These are absolutely superior at grabbing ICs. It's just a fact. It's also just a fact that no matter how many times I turn off all the sounds in my house, that a sound will come from the other room and just haunt me as I'm recording. Whew. Anyway, now that you guys see the superiority of the hook tweezer in a lot of these situations, let's make some because the deal is the biggest part of QCing a set of hook tweezers is the fact that if you mess up the hook at the end, it's done. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's game over. It's done. You know what I mean? So I'm going to let y'all take the risk. Y'all buy whatever kind of tweezers y'all like. I personally actually think that some of these, these overhook tweezers that aren't straight down the line that allow you to kind of get over stuff, um, and then some even have like a bigger arch on them, those are actually the best ones to do this with because you can kind of come from the side, you know what I'm saying? But today, we're actually just going to use some generic BST 16Cs. Um, these are super generic, but they're, they've, they've kind of got like a wide wide body on them compared to some of these other ones, you know what I mean? So, you know, I just thought it'd be something fun to play with and, you know, make one of these out of. And you're also going to need something else. You're going to need a nice metal spudger with a nice, like, kind of, not sharp tip, but something that's a little more pointy, you know what I mean? reason for that is if we hop down here, what we're actually going to do is we can see here that these are quite fine tipped as they are. Um, BST, best, whatever you want to call them, they're actually not terrible. I've been to their factory. They're, they're really nice people. Um, I always kind of like looked at them as more of like a low tier, but you know, they do have some surprisingly good tweezers sometimes. You know, just to take a moment here. Oh man, I actually, I think these are the BST 17s. Um, these ones are sweet. I really love these ones. And then you know, like I said, the 16Cs are actually pretty nice. So they've got some, they, they, they've actually got like a nice cool kit. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I've actually got it on the website. So if y'all want to go check it out, I'll, you know, I'll make sure it's down there and everything. But they got, it's like some hidden gems, you know what I mean? But let's make this thing now. So the deal is, we're going to take a look here and we're going to compare it against, make sure I get the right ones here. Um, we're going to compare it against my already pre-made ones. I just made a little mark on there um, just for the distance you know what I mean um, truly this is measure an IC it's like slightly thicker than that you know what I mean you're, you're just trying to hook around some of those small ICs you know what I mean um, then we're gonna come down here we're gonna find that spot I recommend taking the coating off And it's super easy with one of these metal spudgers. The reason I want to take the coating off is uh, more or less just because it, it allows slippage. Right, and there's there's a little more friction on that bare metal. So now we've got those those edges off. We're gonna come back down here again, and actually we need a nice strong service. So if you got yourself one of the old school. Uh, Jewelers anvils that I used. Well, actually, I still kind of recommend uh, as a board. All kind of reasons I recommend them. Go watch the video five and one. Um, we want the material to be stronger than the, the tweezers, clearly, so that you know it will bend them. I'm going to come down here. And you can see this budger's actually kind of got like an angle to it. So this is going to make it real easy for me to do this. Um, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to angle these up, and I'm just going to. One, you see, see how we're starting to get that hook, right? And we, there we go. We cleaned up that little area. Woo! We got ourselves some nice hook toucan Sam tweezers. Look at what we got here. Let's compare and test. Look at that. They are super duper similar. Man, my nose is itching. Every time I leave the lights on for too long, like it must be these, must be the lights for YouTube. Because I swear, either that or just recording just makes my nose itch. 
Anyway, let's get down here and let's use our uh, our modified best brand 16 C's, and let's see if we can lift this IC up the way. Are we gonna get? Oh, well, if we could be in focus, that'd be smart, Justin. All right, the test is: do we can we get in there, grab these things real easy, and we're hooked in? And look at that. We just. I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of slinging it a little bit on it. I'm putting a little bit of force on it there. I, I don't think I need to go on anymore. You guys see the advantages. You see the disadvantages of the straight one, which doesn't mean there's not a lot of reasons to have them. Make sure you have all the good straight tweezers you're going to need and you know, try out a bunch of fun ones because they are fun to try on. You might find something that you didn't realize was going to be good for your hands. Like Sometimes you just find a pair of tweezers. Like Look at the different shapes here. Like. You know, you just find the, the right pair sometimes, you know what I mean? So don't be afraid to try things out. Um, but with all that, I do appreciate you guys watching today. So make sure you like the video. Make sure you're sharing it in all your groups, on your social media, all that stuff. It really means a lot to me, you know what I mean? Uh, make sure that you are subscribing with all your notifications on because these videos do go out first as a premiere where we all kind of hang out as we do and do the thing. And talk about the video as it's coming out and just kind of shoot the shoot the stuff. You know, you knew what I was gonna say, you know what I mean? But it's a good time. So, you know, please like, share, subscribe, and uh, I will catch you later. Alright, looks like we made it to the end of another video, and I hope that you were having fun right now in your microscope making some of your own hookity hooked toucan sand little gribbity grabby icy tweezers of your very own that you can try out right now without having to order anything, just you're taking a pair of your secondary favorite tweezers because you don't want to mess up your, your 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 favorites, you know what I mean? And you're you're making them right now. I know it. Leave me a comment down below if you just made your own and how you like them. Oh, or maybe you don't like them at all. And you say and you're you're thinking, Justin, you just made me you just made me break a pair of tweezers. You suck. Just let me down. Let me let me know down below. You know what I mean? Now, if you're one of those people that doesn't quite have your microscope yet to be able to make these. Well, good news is, if you see this link down here, Art of Dot Repair, you can take that yank, throw it up here, tippity type it in the bar and everything, head on over there, and you're going to find a link to all kind of stuff, including my tool store, where you can pick up a microscope and basically any of the tweezers that you saw me using today so that you can modify your own and have your own pair of, you know, homemade hook tweezers. Oh, I know. It's going to be awesome. So anyway, I hope you learned something today. I hope you had fun, and I will catch you next time.